The next lab you will be completing in this class is the analysis of an unknown salt, research and part one. Lab five is completed in four different parts, one part being completed each week of the quarter. During each part of this lab, you will be learning more about the physical and chemical properties of an unknown ionic compound. During this lab, you will be working independently, which means without a lab partner. Each student will have their own unknown compound to determine the identity of. At the beginning of this lab, we will be using chemistry reference manuals to research the known properties of nine ionic compounds. Do not complete the research table before you come to lab. Instead, bring an empty research table that we will look up the information for. In this lab, you will be using a Bunsen burner. When using an open flame, make sure to tie long hair back and keep paper away from the flame. In addition to Bunsen burners, another lab safety concern for this lab is hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid is corrosive. You should, care should be taken when using corrosive chemicals. If you accidentally get hydrochloric acid on your skin, rinse your skin underwater until all of the chemical has been removed. Part one of this lab has three different experiments. Part A involves determining whether your unknown salt is hygroscopic, deliquescent, efflorescent, or not any of these. I have not given you procedures for this part of the lab. Instead, before coming to lab, you will need to plan an experiment that will allow you to qual quantitatively determine the hygroscopy of your unknown salt. Part B of this lab involves heating your unknown salt in the tip of a lab scoop over the Bunsen burner flame to determine the melting point. Make sure to record qualitative observations in your lab notebook. Some of the salts in this lab are hydrates, which means they contain water. And other salts decompose at a temperature lower than their melting point. These factors should be taken into consideration before the data from this experiment can be used to determine the identity of your unknown salt. Part C of this lab involves using a nichrome wire and an aqueous solution of your unknown salt to determine the flame color that the salt produces. You will need a test tube and a test tube rack to hold the corrosive hydrochloric acid for cleaning your nichrome wire. I'm going to show you how to clean a nichrome wire right now. I'm going to start by putting on my laboratory safety goggles. My hair is already tied back, so I'm ready to use my Bunsen burner. I'm going to use the strikers that are found in the side of the lab bench to light the Bunsen burner. I'll turn on the gas and use the striker to light the Bunsen burner. When I pick up a nichrome wire from the lab part, it's a little dirty. I might see a few different colors when I put the nichrome wire into the flame. So to begin with, I'm going to dip the nichrome wire into a test tube full of hydrochloric acid. This will clean the nichrome wire. I'll then take the nichrome wire with the hydrochloric acid, put it in the Bunsen burner flame to burn off any hydrochloric acid. If necessary, you're still seeing colors on the nichrome wire. You can dip it once more into the hydrochloric acid to clean any chemicals off the nichrome wire. Once you get no flame color or the orange of the nichrome wire, your nichrome wire is clean and ready to use to determine the flame color of your unknown salt. At this part in the experiment, you are finished. You can turn off your Bunsen burner. If time allows, you may repeat any part of this experiment to collect more data that might be useful for identifying your unknown compound. At the end of the lab, make sure you dispose of all chemical waste in the labeled containers. There'll be a chemical waste container for hydrochloric acid and one for your unknown salt also. When you have finished with the experiment and put away the waste, you should return any borrowed equipment to a cart, shelf, or drawer. Clean your glassware and put it in your drawer. Wipe off your lab bench. When your lab bench is clean, you may remove your goggles, lock your drawer, wash your hands, and leave the lab.